Hi, I'm Richard Sanchez, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the new EDL importer to create visual effects markers, visual effects subcaps, and subclips for your plate pulls. Now here's a new feature we've added in the EDL importer 3.9.2. In every section there's a blue button, which is your import, and a red button, which is your purge. Purge simply deletes all records. The idea is this isn't a database per se. This is a utility. So when you're done with the data in each of these sections, you generally want to delete them all because they just kind of serve a one-time purpose. But let's get started. So we have a sequence here and we're going to treat this sequence like this is a very visual effects heavy sequence. Every single shot here is a shot and needs a number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select into out and I'm going to subsequence this. The reason is I don't want to put a marker on my head and tail leaders. I'm going to jump to the end, create my subsequence. I'll just drag that into the bin. There's my sub. And here we are. I'm going to go to tools. I'm going to go to list tool. And I'm going to drag this here. And I have a preset, but I'll show you that the only important thing here is that I uncheck black edits because I don't want to put a marker on my black edits. You can include your color decision list if you want. You can include clip names, source file names, markers. This is a file 129 EDL. I'm going to hit preview. I'm going to hit save list. And let's save this out. And I want to bring this into the EDL importer. So I'm going to click on tools. I'm going to click on import. And let's go to that EDL we just brought in. So you can see it brought in 215 events. I have 215 markers. And if I go across here, you can see event 215. So there we are. We have 215 shots we're about to number. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to tools. I'm going to click on Number Visual Effects, and this is where you can set your VFX naming convention. So, for example, if you're working on a show that wants to use episode number and scene, for example, 101, scene 10, and then an underscore, that's how you would name it that way. In this case, I like to use three-letter identifiers. So the movie's called Bingo Night, so I'm going to put B and T. The starting number is 1,000, and I'm going to increment it by 10 each. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see we've jumped to the end. Visual effect 3140. And going back, you see we have visual effect BNT 1000, 1010, 20, 30, 40, 10 at a time. So the advantage of this is if you've ever manually numbered your visual effects, you might uh, run into the situation where you duplicate numbers like I have, and then you have to redo them, and that is not fun. So we've let the computer handle that. Every event on this EDL just got a number. So I'm going to go to Tools. I'm going to Export a Marker List. And I'm going to set what track I want this to go on. I'm going to send this to Track 1. Marker Name. This is by default is your Avid User Settings. So I'm going to call this VFX so they stand out. I'm going to color them green. And you can put them either on the first frame of the clip or the center. I'm going to put them on the center. I'm going to hit OK and let's export that. You'll notice that it didn't allow me to set the name. That's on purpose and I'll show you why in just a second here. I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to go to subcap. Let's kick out our marker list and lastly I'm going to go to tools. Let's kick out an ALE for tape based clips because all of these are dailies they have tapes so I'm going to kick this out and it's going to ask me my naming convention so likewise I have to set my ALE header this is a 1080 project the frame rate is 2398 and I can set my naming convention so for example if these are backgrounds BGs I could set that to BG and you can see this example will show up here I'm going to call this MP01 main plate 01 I'm going to hit OK send this to that same location where I've been kicking everything out and let's show you what's happening here the reason it didn't let you set the name is because it took the name of the original EDL and it just added what work I've done to it so you can tell really easily the source and the work this is the marker list this is my subcap list that's my tape ALE so let's add markers to this back in the habit I'm gonna to go to my marker tool 
And this subsequence, I don't need that anymore. That served a one-time purpose. I'm going to get rid of that. Here's my main sequence, and I want markers on this. So I'm going to go to the marker tool. I'm going to import markers. Let's point it to that marker list. And look at that. All of my markers just came in. That's pretty cool. Everything is numbered. Now, let's get those subcaps in. So I have a little bin here that I call tools. And in this bin, I just like to keep effects that I use often. And in this, I have a template for my VFX subcap. I'm going to drag that over the top. And you can see this effect spans the entire timeline. And that's fine. So I'm going to go into effects mode. And I'm going to go to caption file, import caption data, and select subcaps. And you can see it'll tell you right here 215 subcaps will be spliced in. So here we go. We just numbered 215 shots in a matter of minutes. Being done manually, this could take a very good portion of your day. And you can see we're looking at our names here, BNT 1860. That matches our subcap. Everything's lining up. We didn't need to do any of that manually. Jumping all the way to the end, 3140. The last thing we have is we have our ALE. And it's worth noting, one thing I didn't point out earlier, handles to add. This is where you set how many handles you want your ALE to have. By default, it's going to set 24 frame handles, but you could set it to 32 if you wanted by simply changing that. And I used the command equal sign option to change every single handle length here. But in this case, I only need 24 frame handles, so I'm going to set that back. So in order to make sure this works, this is my bin where all of my plates are laid out. And I've decided that these main plates are ready to be pulled. And I just need to make sure I have 24 frame handles on all of them. So I'm going to go to my settings. I'm going to go to my import settings, and I'll make sure that my shot log settings are set to merge events with known sources and automatically create subclips. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to turn on reference clips. This is important because this technique can only be applied to master clips. So there are my master clips, and I'm going to select that ALE we created earlier. I'm just going to drag this into the bin and you can see it created a bunch of subclips and just to make those easier to identify I'm going to turn off reference clips and here are all of those subclips and you can see it took the naming convention that we already set. Let's drag this into that bin there we go. It took the naming convention we set. There is the plate name, BNT1000, main plate 1, VFX ID in a custom column, and the original slate. I don't want that information lost, so I just put that here. And now I can just start filling out my information. So typically this frame number would be 985 because it's going to be 16 frames until frame 1001. Then I have eight frame handles. But however, you need to name these. And of course, you can set these in a batch by selecting these. I'm going to set frame. And I can set my starting frame. I can add all of my metadata in the Avid. But you see, I've just sped up pulling 215 plates. All of these have my handles. And just to show you here, toggling back and forth, 24 frames, everything matches. That's pretty cool. We just took hours of work and did that in minutes. That is how to create visual effects markers, subcaps, and subclips with the EDL importer. I'll see you in the next demonstration.